In today's video, I'll show you how I upgraded this cheap 2x42-inch belt grinder to make it a much nicer and more usable tool. I've done a ton of upgrades to it, and I'll show you those upgrades in this video. I'll also show you a few basic upgrades that will vastly improve its functionality if you don't want to do all the things that I've done to mine. In order to demonstrate all of the upgrades that I've done, I'll revert the machine back to how it was when it was delivered. This is more or less how it arrived. I did remove the belt guards, but I'm not going to put those back on. You get the idea. I think this grinder is plenty usable just like this, but there are a couple very simple things that you can do to make it significantly better. The most important things being replacing the platen, the platen bracket, and making a new table. The platen that comes with the grinder is just this piece of thin graphite that sticks to the platen bracket, and it's basically worthless. The platen bracket is also super flimsy and really needs to be more rigid than it is. But more importantly, it's wider than the belt, and the tracking won't allow the belt to go far enough over to the left to be flush with the bracket, and it's really important to be able to bring it right over to the edge in order to get into corners or to grind a bevel onto a knife. Speaking of tracking, I had an issue with this very simple hinge that they use which allows the tracking wheel to pivot. It was really loose and moved from side to side which threw off the tracking. I thought I was going to have to make another hinge, but what I ended up doing is just taking the original pin out and replacing it with a slightly larger one. This ended up being a super easy fix and now there's almost no movement. I went through the trouble of making a fairly complex platen bracket just because I wanted the challenge, but all you really need is a piece of 2 inch angle iron which is exactly the right size. You could even make a couple of them and instead of buying a glass platen or using a piece of hardened steel like I did, you could just replace the whole bracket when it starts to wear out and that would be pretty easy to do. I did have to machine a couple washers to move the bracket out slightly because like I said, the belt would not go over far enough to the left to allow it to be flush with the edge. I machined these on my lathe, but all you really need is a couple washers and they would work just fine. I made a platen out of high carbon steel and I hardened it, but I'll probably get a glass one because this one's already starting to wear. One of the best upgrades that I did was to swap out these flimsy 5 16 by 1 inch steel bars for 5 8 by 1 inch. I used my milling machine for this, but all you need is a hacksaw and a drill. You don't need precision tools to do this. I just did it this way because it was good practice for me to make parts as precisely as possible. I wouldn't say it's a necessary upgrade, but it did make a huge difference in rigidity. I'm only talking about this now because you'll see it as I demonstrate the table that I made. I also drilled and tapped two holes for each arm instead of one. Here's the table that I made out of a piece of quarter inch steel plate. It doesn't tilt and that's something I'm definitely going to have to make in the future, but most of what I'm doing with this machine right now, I don't need a tilting table, so it's not really much of a concern. And the platen bracket does tilt, so I can get a few degrees out of it like that. I also made another arm for the table which gives me another inch of platen and this is the arm that I use most frequently. The downside is that it doesn't allow the platen to swivel so that's why I made the straight one also.
So I think these are the most important upgrades to make this machine way more usable, but of course I did significantly more. Increasing the thickness of the bars added a lot of rigidity to it, but it also highlighted another problem. The way the base is made allows the machine to twist, which is probably not a big deal, but it bothered me enough to find a solution. I had this piece of aluminum kicking around my shop for a few years, so I decided to finally use it. I drilled and tapped a couple mounting holes, and then milled out some parts to give the hinges some clearance. I also had to make some spacers, which I made out of brass. This brace made it much more rigid. It was a lot of work, but I think it was a worthwhile upgrade. Unfortunately, it did bring to light another issue. The only thing supporting this whole front assembly is this quarter inch piece of steel, so no matter how rigid the base is, the front assembly will only be as rigid as this quarter inch piece of steel. To fix that, I made a very simple bracket, which pretty much solved the problem. It might seem like I'm obsessing over making this machine as rigid as possible, but you really want a machine like this to be solid. Vibrations can cause it to start jumping around during a grind, and that can be problematic. I wanted a permanent place for this to live in my shop, so I built a simple stand which I can bolt it to. I also noticed that the tracking pulley arm was twisted in two directions. I probably could have flattened it out, but I decided to go ahead and make another one because it was pretty easy to do and only took me a couple hours. I also took the opportunity to drill and tap a hole for a finer thread for the tracking knob. I also noticed that this spacer was not quite long enough, so I machined another one to bring the tracking pulley in line with the other pulleys. I know a lot of you want to know about the dust collection. This was one of the first things that I made when I got this machine. It's a fairly simple setup. This is just a 3D printed funnel with some aluminum foil tape on it. And this is a 3 inch adjustable duct elbow that I found at my local hardware store. I had some of these glass jars from the dollar store which I thought would work pretty well. Also I thought them being transparent would make for some pretty cool footage and I think I was right. I just cut a hole in the lid and used some aluminum flashing to hold it in place. It might not look like it's doing a great job here with all the sparks flying around, but it does capture about 95% of the dust, so it does work well enough. Here's a serious word of warning though. I had some sparks ignite some steel dust that was left in the jar, so if you do this yourself, make sure that you either empty it out and extinguish any embers every time you use it, or just fill the jar with water, which is what I've started to do. This could have ended up really badly. It could have caused a shop fire, so I don't wanna give anybody a bad idea here. Just make sure if you do it, you make sure there's no embers, or just fill it with water like I did. In my previous videos, I've shown that I have a wheel attachment for this. I bought this wheel on eBay and then I just made a simple mounting arm for it. This is a 6 inch wheel. You can't actually use an 8 inch wheel on this machine, but it's really tight. 
it's probably a better idea to use an 8 inch wheel with a 48 inch belt, which you can also do. This grinder does go into the horizontal position as well, and I made a fairly complex table that's height adjustable depending on what I'm grinding. I don't know how often I'll use this, but I'm glad to have it. Before you go run out and buy one of these grinders, you should know that many people have had problems with the motor and or motor controller burning up. Grizzly did not properly check them before sending them out to customers, and I know a lot of people were upset and rightfully so. This should never have happened. They also sent out a grounding wire along with instructions on how to install them to everyone who purchased these machines. Apparently there was a risk of electrical shocks so the grounding wire is supposed to prevent that. I haven't had any problems with mine but I fully expect that the motor will fail and when it does I'll just replace it with something else. All that aside, I think you're still going to see these machines all over the place because they fill a void in the market. I have a fairly small home shop that takes up about half a garage, so space is precious to me. I bought this Grizzly grinder because I was looking for a grinder that fits somewhere between these 1 by 30 inch belt sanders that you see all over the place and the large 2 by 72 inch belt grinders. With some very basic upgrades, I think it's a fantastic machine to have in a small shop. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything or you have any questions about the grinder. I have no affiliation with Grizzly at all and I paid full price for this grinder which cost about $380 shipped. As usual, I'll have the 3D printing files available on my Patreon. Well I know this was a little bit different from my normal videos but a lot of people asked about it so I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to all of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.